everyone. Welcome back to the Atticus Training Zone here on YouTube and also streaming live in our Facebook community. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day so far. For me, it is Saturday morning and a great start to a beautiful sunny weekend. Uh, if you have joined us in our previous live streams, you'll know the purpose of this live is to go through the new look for Atticus, which I will jump into in just a few moments. But as we're just giving everyone a couple of minutes to join in and uh, let the YouTube algorithm do its thing and, and announce that we have started, uh, please let me know in the comment section who is here, where you're joining from. Maybe let me know what you're working on uh, book-wise. We always love to hear about our author projects. And if you've been here before, share that as well. Uh, I can already see there's a few familiar um, profile icons popping up here. I see you're all already uh, active in the chat. So one of the things that we really, really love around here is engagement in the chats. I mean, I'm sure that's probably true for every YouTube channel, but uh, Atticus authors are so creative and engaging and inspiring, and you guys have the best questions. So um, I'm really looking forward to interacting with you all today. I think this is going to be an exciting live stream. So again, just going to give everyone a few minutes to join in. If you are nervous in the chat, please don't be. We're a very friendly community. Uh, so don't hesitate to say hello um, and join in the conversation. But welcome back, Gabrielle. It's always nice to see you around here. I think you've been to every one of these live streams uh, so far this week since um, since the new look. So thank you for being such a great champion and member of the community. Hello, Laura, it's great to see you. Thank you for being here. Hello, M. Thomas B. Thank you so much for being here. I think you're new to these live streams. So if you wanna let us know a little bit about what you're working on or how you're using Atticus, we'd love to hear from you. Hello, Tyrian. I hope I've pronounced that right. I'm sorry if um, I, I miss, miss spoke. Welcome. Um, I think I've seen your uh, profile around here as well. Sorry, my um, brain gets mixed up with everyone chatting and it's been, uh, this is the fourth day in a row we've done a uh, very similar live stream. So thank you regardless for joining us. I'm so excited you're here. Uh, just so that everyone knows the amazing Felicia is in the comment section today. She is um, one of our phenomenal customer success geeks. I'm sure many of you have had the pleasure of chatting with her as well. And as we go through this live stream, I will do my best to answer all questions uh, live in the video so I can also do some de demonstrations inside Atticus, but she will be helping out in the comments. So um, you may even get your answer, your question answered twice, uh, but Felicia is amazing. So say hello to her. Uh, Trixie, hello from France. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Tyrian is joining from Washington State, um, getting ready to format a fantasy adventure featuring dragon shapeshifters. Well, that is definitely on trend right now. I have been hearing so much about dragons and I have loved dragons since I was a teeny tiny child. So that sounds amazing. Um, congratulations. I'm so excited to uh, hear how that goes in, in future um, events here. Hello, Kim. Thank you so much for being here. We're excited to have you. Uh, it, hi, Michael B. Thanks for clarifying that. Um, using Atticus to do children's book. That's exciting. Uh, we do know Atticus is not um, perfectly designed for that as, as its primary function, but it is absolutely possible. And I'm so excited to hear uh, authors using it for that. Uh, I think we had a children's book author on here yesterday as well. And I said, there's just no such thing as too many children's books in the world. So thank you for everything that you're doing. Hi, Peg, it's great to see you. I'm using the new Atticus, but you, I have a problem. Okay, well, hopefully we will cover that today. Um, I think that you already have asked your question, so I'm gonna save that till the end. What we're gonna do today is go through a demo, make sure everybody is up to date on the new look of Atticus, um, and then we'll go through questions at the end. So I do see your comment there already. Um, if we get to the end and I miss it because it's kind of at the beginning, just re-enter in the chat when we get to the question and answer portion. So that'll probably about, be about 20 minutes in just to, to, to make sure everybody is aware. Um, okay, Tyreen. Oh, thank you for correcting me. I appreciate that. It's a beautiful name. Uh, let's see here. So thank you, thank you. 
Um, okay, so we've got Laura joining from Europe. It's evening there. Yes, a little bit of a time change. Hopefully we um, have covered enough time zones with these live streams. That was the goal. So a lot of the information, if you have been here before, it will be a little bit repetitive, especially the demo at the beginning that was on purpose because we know not everybody can join in at every time. And we wanna make sure that you have live access uh, to seeing these de uh, demonstrations in real time in a time that suits you. So I'm so glad that uh, this time worked for you. Thank you. Um, Kim used Atticus a few years ago, but needs to relearn, especially with all the changes. Okay, well, great time to be jumping back in. Uh, the new look hopefully has made things a little bit more streamlined and even more user friendly. I know uh, one of the common themes is that change is a little bit scary. Not everybody was super excited about the update when it first came out, but I think by um, we're on about day five now, most people are very confident in the new layout We've been having absolutely amazing uh, feedback. Everybody loves the new look. So um, it's really great. We did put a lot of attention into making it as user-friendly as possible because that is one of the missions of Atticus. So um, thank you and uh, and wel welcome back. Hopefully you enjoy the new look and uh, get a new book formatted. Peggy Yeager, big problem with the new format. Okay, can't figure out how to format the way we used to with features other than the theme. Oh, okay, well, we'll go into that today. It is very simple. You just kind of, I think, need to know um, maybe where a new button is, but we'll take care of that for you absolutely and get you back on track. And hopefully within no time, you will feel even more confident using Atticus than ever before. Um, okay. Uh, hi, Robert. Thank you so much for being here. Just added a large print hardcover book with the help from Atticus support. That's exciting. That's amazing. Congratulations. Uh, I love that authors are able to put out different versions of their book without a whole lot of extra uh, cost or time committed. Uh, things like large print versions and dyslexic friendly versions, they're becoming more and more popular, or even just different uh, trim sizes if you want to have a uh, hardcover like Robert that is maybe a different size from your print book, you can do that in basically just an extra click. So um, I'm so glad we were able to help you with that. That is fantastic news. So um, I'm going to jump in and get started with the demo. I don't want to take up too much of your day, but thank you everyone already for joining in and for leaving your comments. I'm going to be sharing my um, Atticus account in just a moment. And once I get in there, I won't see the chat immediately. So I'm gonna run through all of the new features and updates, and then I will come back into the chat in order to answer all of your questions. So if you find that I've run through something a little bit too fast, don't hesitate to let me know and I can touch on that again, but I just wanna kind of go through everything so that everybody is um, caught up to speed and then we can do a deeper dive into whatever is necessary for you guys watching and interacting. So I'm going to jump in now. Um, I'm gonna share my screen. You should be seeing my login screen. So normally when I start these uh, live streams, I start right in the Atticus dashboard. One thing I want to remind everyone is that um, sometimes it is really beneficial to your Atticus experience to log out occasionally. There are multiple benefits to this. Uh, it's It's kind of like, um, restarting your computers, turning it off and turning it on again, as the uh, the funny office quirk um, always says. Basically, what that does is it allows Atticus to just refresh. Um, it makes sure all of your updates are properly installed because sometimes just with your browser, it just needs a refresh. Um, logging out, logging in will do that for you. The other thing it does is it creates an anchor point for your saved um, content. Atticus does stay continuously as you are writing, so it is always auto-saving. But every once in a while, it's really great to have an anchor point where if anything did go crazy with your account and you needed a restore point, it's a lot easier to do that when you have um, actively logged out or press the backup content button, and it just creates a specific timestamp for that saved portion of work. So I like to say at least every week or so, just log out of your account and then log back in. Definitely, if you've noticed your browser updating, um, or if we've released something major on Atticus that we've kind of mentioned to you, then just log out, log back in, and that takes care of almost um, all of the updating process. Another thing that you can do is do a hard refresh once you're logged back in. 
So I'm going to log into my account here. And then to do a hard refresh, if you're on a Windows computer, you're going to press Control Shift R. If you're on a Mac, you're going to press Command Shift R. That covers the majority of computers. There are a few that um, have a little bit of a different command, but you can Google that. Uh, and then Atticus just does that second layer of refreshing. That takes care of 99.9% .9 of the, the any kind of refreshing issues that happen. Um, we just recommend doing that on occasion. So I wanted to go through that right from the start. Now you should be seeing my brand new Atticus Home dashboard. So all of the same features that you are used to um, and that you love and use to format your books, they're all still here. It just has a little bit of a different uh, layout. The reason we needed to do this update isn't just for the fun of change or because we felt Atticus needed a glow up, even though we are loving the new look. Um, we did really focus on trying to make it a lot sleeker and more modern and easier to navigate for multiple different screen sizes. So it is a little bit more user-friendly on the smaller screen sizes. If you're bringing Atticus on the go, on your tablet, on your phone, it is a little bit easier to use now. Um, and if you are working on a much larger screen size, you may notice some ratios are a little bit different. Maybe your chapter um, images here are looking a little bit different. This look, um, doesn't impact how it exports. This is just your dashboard. This is just what you're seeing. And so I don't want anybody to worry that if their cover looks like the title is cut off a little bit, it's going to export at full size, just so just so you know. And hopefully, um, you know, enough of your cover is showing that you can tell exactly what book you're looking at um, or ready to work on. So a few other things that are a tiny bit different here is um, you still have your upload book or start a new book and create a new box set buttons. They're just kind of really easy to access up at the top here. We have a new link to our tutorials page. If you guys haven't checked out our tutorials yet, um, I know this is something that some people have missed and they didn't realize it was even on our website, but we do our very best to make sure that all of our features are explained in step-by-step -step instructions with screenshots. A lot of them will have videos as well. Uh, with this new look, we're remaking every single video we've ever created. So some of those will be rolling out over the next couple of weeks. But um, at the very least, you should find everything in step-by-step -step instructions uh, in a tutorial form. And now you can access that really easily from this link in your home dashboard here. Um, front and center, you can see recent work. Your books, the most recently that you've worked on, will show up first on your home screen. And you can also scroll down a little bit further and you can see your master pages here. Uh, we can go into master pages a little bit more, but most of you, I think, know what these are. They used to be kind of tucked away in a gallery and you could access them mainly from uh, a book you were working on. You can still do that, but now you can also see them from your home dashboard. So if you know you have to update your uh, about author page, for example, you can just come to your home dashboard, open it up edit it right from here and then save it out to all of your books and then just re-export the, um, the files that you need. So just making it a little bit easier uh, to access these master pages. If you click the see all beside your master pages or beside your books, it's going to bring you to your my books page. You can also click from the top center here. Your My Books, this will show you everything in your account. This is this is everything you've got going on, all of your books, all of your master pages. You can also filter it down so that it only shows you your books or it only shows you your master pages. If you are looking for a specific book, you can search here for the title of that book. If you had previously set up a project or a version, you can search for that here. So I do have um, a bunch of workbooks set up. That was what I called them all in the project section. And so I can search here and they will all show up and filter everything just by the title here. Um, or if I just want to know where all my little dog ready books are, I can type that in here. Um, you can also sort all of your books uh, with this menu here, recently added, date modified or alphabetical order. There will be project inversion coming back to that list, so you can sort it that way. That will be returned very soon. And you can also decide which view you like a little bit better. If you prefer things in a list format, you can select that here, or you can go with the regular grid view, depending on what you're more comfortable with. Aside from that, um, all of the features for your home dashboard should be fairly uh, 
standardized, you can always get back to your home dashboard by clicking the logo here on the top left. And in the top right, you have your profile icon. As always, your logout button can be found right there. Uh, you have a link through to if you need to contact support. Uh, you can back up your content with this button here. That is going to, again, create one of those little um, timestamps in the cloud so that it captures everything at this exact moment when you press that button. It will also export a JSON file for you, and you can keep that on hand as a Atticus account backup. If anything ever happens, we can use that file to restore your account. So if you accidentally deleted a book that you didn't mean to, we can bring that back for you if you occasionally click this content backup button. When you log out, it does the full account backup as well, and we'll also uh, export that JSON file. And then you have the install app button. So if you are using Atticus in your browser and you decide you want it kind of as a standalone program, maybe you like the distraction free look of that better, you can install the app version. They do work exactly the same. All of the same features are um, there. So if you are working in a browser that does not support progressive web apps, um, for example, Firefox, you will still get all of the main features just by logging into app.atticus.io. If this button is not working, it depends on your system. Everyone is a little bit different. You should see a very similar icon in your actual URL browser bar to the right, uh, and it will have the same functionality for you. So that's a quick overlook, uh, overlook sorry, of our uh, dashboard. I'm going to jump into a book right now, and we can look over some of the updates to this area. Again, all of the features that you are used to and love, they are all still here. They may be just slightly different um, in location. So one of the first things you'll notice is there is no uh, title up here. Um, if you're in the formatting tab, it will not say content or theme where you can jump back and forth. Uh, so a few changes, that's really the only thing different about the left navigation panel on a global scale. You can always use these buttons here to go back to your home dashboard. Instead of clicking your title from the top of the left navigation panel to get to your book details, it's now a button. So just easier access. Um, all the content that you are used to seeing there is here, including your start page for the EPUB version. Um, this is where you would put in any projects. Uh, so as I had the workbooks, you can have that in here or a version number if you're working on version one of your book, that sort of idea. You can upload your ebook cover here and you can do all your exporting to EPUB, PDF, or DOCX files um, here. The download snapshot button, if you are not familiar with this, this is a um, at the second uh, content backup of just this book. So the backup content button up here that we talked about backs up your entire Atticus account. The snapshot just backs up this one individual book. So you don't always have to back up your entire account if you're just making changes to one book, you can just keep the snapshot for that uh, one individual book. And if you make a huge change that you regret a day later and you want to go back to the previous version, you can send us that file and we'll be able to restore that for you. Um, going back, the main toolbar up here is fairly similar. A few options have moved, but you still have um, all of your, you know, your alignment, your list, your headings are here, uh, the new text message and call out boxes, all of these features are still here. The things that have changed is the sprint timer and the apply smart quotes function. Um, so I'll get to those as we get to those sections, but they still exist. Um, don't worry about that. Down here at the bottom toolbar, you'll have your saving, saving, saved um, message here. It used to kind of be in the top right. Now you'll see it down here. This is just a little bit more standardized with other programs. This is generally where they're located. So we've moved it there. Similarly, we had a lot of requests for easier access to the docx export. So we have brought that into the writing editor here. You can just export your um, book to Word or docx by clicking this button here. This is the new home for the sprint timer. So if you want to increase your productivity and do kind of Pomodoro timer situation, you can do that here. And we have your word count down at the bottom right here. So you can decide if you want it to always show book, chapter, or just a selection. It used to be up in the top corner here, and you would have to actively go and open it up 
uh, whenever you wanted to check your word count. We know a lot of authors want to see how far they're progressing in their book or their chapter as they're writing. And so to eliminate that step where you have to click the button, you can just set it to your preference here and you can always see where your word count is at. Uh, so that's a handy little update for you there. The other uh, change is when you were in the writing editor previously, there used to be a more tools menu pullout. Again, just to save you that extra step, we've streamlined it. It is just in a single panel here. Uh, this also gives us space um, where we will be adding new features in the future. So for everyone who is really excited about collaboration and plotting and outlining, um, this update has really set up the foundation so that we have space to include these new features without overcrowding things and to keep things um, really consistent and looking great. So right now, if you want to set your preferences for the writing um, editor, you can set that here by clicking on the T. This does not affect the output of your book. So this will not change how your EPUB or PDF exports. This is just for your writing comfort. If you are writing inside Atticus, you can change the font and style of what it looks like here in the writing editor. Next in line, you have the find and replace function. This works exactly the same as it used to. Uh, your goals section, so your book goals and your writing habit, again, same as it, it always used to work, just a little bit easier to access now. And this is where the new smart quotes um, is living now. So it used to be in the sidebar here, kind of took up a little bit of space um, and it just wasn't really necessary in that toolbar. So we've moved it here to the features area but you can still see if you have any inconsistencies in the punctuation. Uh, you can see I have one chapter that has mixed quotes, which means some of them are straight, some of them are curly, and I can use the Apply Smart Quotes to fix that up for me automatically, chapter by chapter, if I choose to. And then one of the biggest changes that has kind of caused the biggest buzz that people are loving, made a lot of people nervous at the very beginning, but it is um, a, a fan favorite, is the previewer button down in the left corner here. So you no longer have to be in the formatting view in order to see your book. Uh, you can be in the writing editor fully and you can pull out the previewer here. Otherwise it works exactly the same. You can change it to print preview. Uh, you can change the device type. I know I'm going to be getting questions about can you um, set the default to print. So I will go over that right now. You cannot. And the reason for that is because anytime you make any change at all in your book, if you add a single line or a single space, Atticus has to re-render your entire book to make sure that your page count and the words and absolutely everything in the layout lines up and reflects this new change. So if you're working on a really long book or if you have a lot of images or, um, if your internet isn't you know, the absolute fastest speed that it could be, all of those changes are going to create lag when you have the print preview loaded because it has to keep updating the layout. So we don't recommend working with the writing editor while it is in print preview, which is why we don't um, allow you to set that as the default because it just preemptively prevents some lag issues there. Uh, you can, of course, use it to check any of your formatting changes or um, take a peek whenever you need to. So that is the writing editor. Uh, the other thing, I didn't mention this, but we do have some new icons if you want to create yourself a part or a volume. Um, if you need more information on how to do this, we do have a full tutorial. Uh, I can go over it in a quick demo if you need, but I'll just quickly show you. You can now see we have slightly different icons over here. Uh, just showing you the difference between a part, a volume, or just a regular page or chapter. Uh, this really doesn't change the functionality at all. I just like it. I think it looks really great. Um, and then, as always, you can remove your parts. Uh, again, we can go over this, but just since I'm doing it, I'll explain. If you ever import something into a volume or a part and you decide you don't need it in that volume or part anymore, you can click the X to delete it. Um, Children is industry jargon for the content that is nested within that section. So if you want to delete all of the content, you can click delete children. If you just want to remove the part or volume, you want to keep your children and it keeps all your chapters and just puts them back into the main body section. Uh, so you can see um, I have chapters one through five nested in this part here. If I delete it um, and keep the children, it just puts the chapters back in place here. 
that was just a quick demo. This is not a uh, really big tutorial on how each of these features work. It's really kind of just a run through on where you'll find things. So now in the formatting tab, again, all of the features that you are used to and love and use on a daily basis are still here. It just looks a little bit different. So we've streamlined everything. You still have all of your um, themes here. If you want to get in and edit something, you just click the three dots uh, underneath your thumbnail for the theme that you are editing and just click the edit button. Now, instead of having to scroll down a really long screen full of options, you can choose the section that you want to adjust in the sidebar here. Again, it's just making it a little bit easier to work through all of these steps without having to do a ton of scrolling or searching for what you're uh, wanting to update. So this makes it a little bit just quicker and easier was the goal. Um, and also sets the stage for all the new options coming because you can see we have lots of great space to work with now. Uh, so as always, if you want to remove any of the features, you just add or remove the check mark boxes here between each of the options. You can change anything uh, that you'd like. You have your images down here for the chapter heading. You can work through your paragraph settings, your subheading settings scene break settings, note settings, all of those settings are exactly the same as it used to be, um, just a little bit easier to access now. Where it does change a little bit is when you start to get into the print layout. We used to have print settings and then advanced settings, and some of the features were getting a little bit lost. People didn't, uh, you know, maybe didn't feel quite confident to go into the advanced section. So even though these are considered advanced features, you can leave them at their default and it will create a beautifully um, professional publish ready book. But if you want to make adjustments, it's still just as easy to use um, as everything else in Atticus. So in the print layout section, you will now find uh, where you can adjust your margins and the size of your indents. You can change whether you want your uh, final print book to be justified or hyphenated uh, or both. The keep options here, these will keep your ornamental breaks and your subheadings with the next paragraph below them. So if ever you have a location in your book where the subheading is the last thing that fits on a page and then the paragraph um, that connects to that is bumped up to the next page, the subheading will keep with your paragraph if you have this setting enabled. If you do not want that to happen, you can um, uncheck these boxes. Layout priority, we do have a tutorial that goes over what these mean, uh, but basically you can adjust to prevent widows and orphans. You can uh, choose to adjust so that the last line on your page of the print book is always perfectly balanced, or you can use the recommended Atticus algorithm that uh, prioritizes widows and orphans first and then goes through it and balances your page as well. This layout um, for best of both is not 100% guaranteed perfect all the time, but it does the best job that it possibly can to unite both of those uh, items. Um, this, as I always say, if you've been here before, you've heard me say this, um, layout priority is one of the biggest time, uh, time sucks that book form writers have to devote to. It's one of the main reasons they get to charge you a lot of money because when you have to work through every single page to get this right. It can take a lot of time and a lot of energy. So by Atticus adding this as a one click, um, it really saves you as a, as a self formatter a ton of time and energy to get this absolutely professional look uh, without hardly any effort. So next in line, we have the typography, which is the body font for your print book. So you can choose the font and the size and the spacing. Um, you can also decide if you want to do a large print book. This takes care of almost all of the work for you. You have your headers and footers. So this is the running text along the top of your page and the bottom of your page. You can choose what information you would like by scrolling through this, um, this menu here uh, and decide what looks best to you. You can choose any of these options and you can choose the header font and size um, and footer font and size separately. If you would like them to be the same or different, you can make that choice yourself. And then the trim sizes, this is the size your book will print in. We have all the most popular trim sizes in here, um, color coded so that you know what is supported by KDP, what is supported by Ingram Spark, and what is just kind of an industry uh, standard size that you can choose from. Once you've gone through all of these choices, as always, you're just gonna wanna save your theme. It will bring you back to the main menu. You can still click the little heart icon if you want it to 
uh, be saved as a theme that bumps up to the very top if you know that's what you're using. Every time you format a book, you can do that. And uh, that is basically uh, the run through of all of the changes. So um, I know that was a quick look at everything. And I'm going to jump back and look at the comment section now and see if you guys have anything that you still need more clarity on, if you have any questions. Um, but hopefully that helps you feel a little bit more confident with the new look and you can find everything that you're looking for. I'm going to jump, I'm going to scroll back through the contents here. Okay, let's see. Where did I leave off? All right. Um, Gabriel, thank you so much. You are such a wonderful addition to this community. You're always so positive in the comments. We really appreciate you. And it's so good to know that you are in love with the new glow up. We did try to make it a, a little bit more clean and um, organized and easier to access everything. So we really appreciate that. Uh, Laura is using Atticus for plays. That's um, exciting. Um, I love that. That's that's very cool. Um, Robert says, I can no longer log into my account. Why? I am not sure. Uh, if you're getting a blank screen, you may want to do the hard refresh that I talked about at the very beginning. Uh, it's probably just needs a update or a refresh. So uh, try pressing control shift R or command shift R if you're on a Mac. Um, if that doesn't work immediately for you, it is possible that is a website update caching issue. And you can try um, opening app.atticus dot io uh, in an incognito chrome browser if you do still have any trouble with this um, just send our support team an email uh, support at atticus.io so that's a good point to mention we have done everything we can to make sure that you have access to us in these live stream events um, i'm going to be putting out more and more demos and tutorials by video format on our youtube channel we do have an amazing facebook community where you can go and ask questions there as well uh, we do have the tutorials on the website we have a chat bot on our website all of these are ways for you to access information on your own if, however, you ever have any need that you just can't find the answer to, you are always welcome to contact our support. We have, um, in my opinion, the world's best support. We are all authors. We all understand what you're going through, and we are legitimately here to help you. Um, we try to answer questions as quickly as possible, so don't ever uh, hesitate to send us an email, and we will always do our very best to take care of you. Uh, Vicky says, with the new updates, is there any way to dictate directly into Atticus? At the moment, um, there's nothing fully integrated with Atticus. It is something that we are looking into. It's something that we would love to include uh, both text to, uh, or both uh, speech to text and text to speech, because we know also a lot of authors like to hear their work played back. It's a great way to self-edit. Um, these are things that we are actively looking into to find the best solution. As of now, we have had many customers report that other dictation programs, primarily Dragon Dictation, has worked well with Atticus, but it's not a full integration. It's not something that we have worked um, to make sure, um, you know, the two companies speak well together. But we have had, I think, only success stories from that. If that is a program that you are already using, um, then that might help. But it is, we do hope to add this as a feature in Atticus at some point in the future. Uh, so there is always room for personal opinions. Uh, Trixie says, I kind of miss the old look, but the navigation of the new one is so much smoother. Um, we absolutely understand that change is a lot to take in. Um, it uh, is surprising and can be a little bit hard to come to terms with when you got so used to things the way they were. Um, I've mentioned this in a few of the other live streams the more that I am in Atticus, the less I even really remember how things used to be. So I hope that is the same for you. I hope you get more comfortable and uh, things just seem to feel like the new normal very soon. Um, no print preview by default makes sense. Yes, thank you. Um, we know it, 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 it can be a little bit annoying. Um, we absolutely understand that. Again, we are all authors ourselves, so we understand these. And uh, in our support team, we'll often say things like, oh, you know, when, when you totally relate to everyone who's writing in. Um, but there are some things that just uh, the way technology works, we have to work with it. So hopefully it doesn't come up to be too much of an issue because you can go back and forth with the print previewer. But 
Um, I'm so used to seeing it on iPad view no, now that uh, it almost looks funny to be on another view for me. Song Fantasy says, um, my paragraphs are very long as I've imported from Word into Atticus. I'm having to go back through the book and break up every paragraph into smaller paragraphs. Is there an easier way to do this? Um, if your paragraphs were broken up in Word and they did not Im import into Atticus as separate paragraphs, my guess is that you used um, line breaks in the Word document as opposed to paragraph breaks. That would be something that would be easiest to adjust in your original Word document if it is the case. Um, I can't jump into Word and, and show you that right now, but basically you would wanna do a find and replace, um, find all of your line breaks. Uh, there's a style guide in Word. You can put line break in the find position and you can put paragraph break in the replace and replace all that way and then report into Atticus. That would probably be a lot quicker solution. However, if your paragraphs weren't broken up in Word, or if that is not the solution, this is something that we would have to work with you to see your exact instance. Um, so by all means, if that quick solution, and you can Google it for more um, for more step-by-step -step instructions, if you're not uh, used to using the find and replace in Word, you can find out how to do that. Uh, there are lots of tutorials online. Um, but if that doesn't work for you, write into support and we'll, uh, we'll make sure we can find a better solution for you there. Um, after finishing working each chapter in body, do we merge them all? Title and copyright page. Um, I'm not sure I understand this question. After finishing working each chapter in body, do we merge them all? I don't think so. Um, I, you shouldn't have to merge anything. So the way I have my book set up right now, you can see um, up at the top of the left navigation panel, there's the title page and the copyright page and the contents page. That, those are all just going to export individually in your book and the body content. All those chapters are going to export individually. Um, I'm not sure I really understand the, the question. So if that didn't answer it, just rephrase and I'll, I'll do my best to explain better. Uh, okay, I formatted my first books um, on my own in Word. Atticus is a huge time saver. Yeah, I mean, Word is the phenomenal program for what it is. It's a word processing program. It's a great place to write. Um, it is kind of a industry standard. It's been around forever, but it wasn't really designed to format books or it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't designed for books in any way. So Atticus is focused on authors and books and and it just has what you need and it doesn't have all of the extra um, features that you just don't need to write a book. Word has a lot of kind of convoluted stuff and um, it's a great program for what it is, but it's, it's I used to format books in Word as well and it is a lot more work. I also used to format books in InDesign and let me tell you, I do not miss that. <laughs> Atticus has saved so many hours for my life. <laughs> um, it's good to save time in formatting and post writing. Absolutely. Uh, so one of the things we haven't talked about yet in this live stream is the uh, master pages. But if you are using master pages, and if anybody needs more information on that, you can let me know. But um, you might be all good with this in the comment section today. Um, but master pages really save a ton of time so that you can reuse pages in multiple books. Um, and if you're making any edits or whatever, you don't have to really go back and make sure that everything has reformatted itself um, after getting it right the first time. So hopefully, I mean, that's the goal of Atticus is to save everyone a lot of time and energy and just help you avoid the learning curve. Uh, my Grammarly isn't showing up with the new system. How can I get it back? Um, so Grammarly, it can be a little bit tricky uh, just in general working with Atticus. Um, I'm not sure how you have originally set it up, but if it was working before, probably you have the desktop version of Grammarly and you will want to use that with the browser version of Atticus. So it, they they aren't super compatible app to app, um, but if you're in the browser of Atticus, it should work. If it doesn't originally with this new update, you may need to clear your cache. So right into support and we can walk you through that process. It's really not difficult. Um, I just can't show it in a live tutorial here because it doesn't show my entire browser. But up in your browser, there's kind of a, a little um, filters button in the top left. And if you click on that beside where the URL is, you can go to site settings um, and uh, it will say delete data. 
that's if you're on app.atticus.io, you want to first log out, just make sure everything is backed up and safe there. Um, if you delete the data just on app.atticus, it will just clear your cache for um, our site only. It won't impact your entire browser history. And then things should work a little bit more smooth and you can log back in and it should be fine. Hopefully, if you continue to have problem, write into support and we'll, we'll work with you for that. Um, we got some okays and thank yous. Um, hopefully I'm answering some, some questions. Um, okay, can you address back matter, not seeing it on screen? Um, okay, Kim, I think you were the one who said you haven't used Atticus in a little while. So we did remove the back matter section in Atticus quite a while ago. That wasn't with this glow up, that was um, quite a while ago now. And the reason for that is that the back matter sectioning off into its own little um, kind of area was really just kind of redundant. So the reason we have the front matter section on its own is because of the pagination requirements for your print book. So with a print book um, to follow industry standards, everything, um, well, the first page, page number one of the book has to start with the body content. So in order to get page number one from the body, we need to know what is not body. So that's why the front matter is sectioned off by itself. So for your reference, anything um, that is above the table of contents in your book, anything that appears before the table of contents would, it will not have any pagination at all. It just, it it is kind of a blind spot before the table of contents. Anything that happens after the table of contents, but before the first page in the body section will be paginated with Roman numerals. This is industry standard. Um, most publishers actually require it. So that's why Atticus has that section um, separated. The back matter, however, the pagination just continues from the rest of your body section. So the page numbering just keeps going and you really don't need to separate it off into its own section. If you want to add a page um, and you come here and add a chapter and you want to tell Atticus that this is not a chapter, it's a different type style of page. All you, uh, this only applies if you have your um, automated numbering. Um, so you can see I have the one and the two before my titles. Uh, if you don't have those, if it's not numbered, or if you don't want it to be numbered, you can click on the three dots beside body and uncheck numbered chapter here. This will remove the numbering for all of your chapters in the body section. It will get rid of that for you. Um, if you, you can check it again to have it set back to numbers. So you can see they all were moved here um, and I can put them all back and it will add them all back. The numbers here. If you just want to tell this, uh, tell Atticus this one page is not a numbered chapter, you can click on the three dots and just unnumber that chapter there. And then you can make this into any type of back matter page that you want it to be. Um, so if you're writing a sneak peek and you want to add that in here, you can do that and it will act as back matter, um, but it doesn't need to be in its own section. So hopefully that made sense there. Um, let's see here. Do you plan on making Atticus on different languages for non-English speaking writers? Um, so it, it, the, I'm guessing you mean the user interface so that um, you know writing and formatting is in Spanish or French or uh, German or whatever language you're um, speaking. Um, it may be something that gets updated in the future. It's not um, the highest on our priority list, to be honest. You can import and work and create your books uh, in other languages, um, that absolutely works. The only exception right now is any languages that do not use the Latin character alphabet have trouble with the PDF format. So we are working on more options for that, but basically the characters have to be embedded in the font, font family. They have to be part of the font family and most font families use only Latin characters. So if you're writing in uh, Spanish or German, this won't be a problem because you use the same Latin alphabet as English. If you are using Chinese characters, for example, or any other language that uses um, a different alphabet system, it won't export to the PDF version. EPUBs are really great at handling this. So you can create eBooks. Um, it just will be the uh, PDF that struggles. And we are working on options to get some font families that do support other language uh, alphabets. The only other exception is the automated chaptering, automated, yeah, automated chapter numbering. There we go. Um, you can set it to be just a number. Um, so if I come in, you can see um, 
currently I have chapter one. I could edit my theme so that I just have the number one, um, but I, you only have so many options that are in English here. So if you are writing a book in a different language, you would just not want to use the automated chapter numbering and just not have that um, used at all. You can, the only other, um, the only other page that is kind of automated is the uh, table of contents. So this contents title um, is automatically in English, but you can just type on it um, and and retitle it and it, um, it will change the title. Actually, it's saying the wrong thing right now. Um, there we go. So you can change that to be whatever you would like it to say here. Uh, okay. Uh, so the paragraphs were broken up in Word and looked fine. So same solution you just mentioned. Yeah, you want to try the, the find and replace first of all. Um, if you turn your formatting marks on, um, that's in your home menu on Word. There's a little icon that looks like a backward P. You can turn that on and it will show you the formatting marks. Uh, the difference between a paragraph break and a line break, uh, a line break is going to look like a backwards arrow. So if you're seeing that little icon between your paragraphs in Word, then you have line breaks. Um, if you're seeing the backwards P icon, that is a paragraph break. Uh, so you'll want to make sure you have paragraph breaks. This is, usually comes up if you press shift enter at the end of your lines instead of just enter by itself. But some um, keyboards are just a little bit different. So it depends on how it was set up. Um, as an aside, so you can search how to find and replace that and that should take care of the issue. Um, in Atticus, just as an aside, since we're kind of on the topic of line um, breaks versus paragraph breaks, um, so right now I have my, my theme set to add a space between my paragraphs here. You can see, hopefully. Uh, the difference here is I've, so I've pressed enter after this paragraph and that inserted a paragraph break. If I remove that line and I press shift enter instead, that creates a line break. So you can see it doesn't have the gap here. Um, if my theme was set to indent instead of space, if you press shift enter instead of enter, it will remove the indent. So basically it's just creating the same paragraph. It's keeping the paragraph going, but on a new line, as opposed to starting a whole new paragraph. Um, if you are using the block quote or verse features, I'm going over this because it comes up often in our, um, in our questions in the inbox. So if you're using a block quote, this indents from both sides, the verse formatting indents even further from both sides. Either way, um, you can see if you press enter between these paragraphs, it starts a brand new block quote, which does have a bit of a larger gap between them. And you have two different uh, settings adjustments here because it's starting a, a whole new quote. Um, if you want to keep it within the same quote, again, you bring your paragraphs together and you press shift enter. And you can see now I only have the one gear icon. You can press shift enter twice if you want a little bit of a gap, but not as big of a gap. Um, and it still keeps it within the same quote. So um, just another little tip for everyone because we get that one quite often, even if it's not in the comment section right now. Um, okay, David, welcome to our live stream. Thanks for being here. What is the process to prepare a Google Doc manuscript for Atticus? So almost all of the settings are exactly the same in Google Docs as they are in Word. So if you see our prepare a Word tutorial, um, all of the settings can be pretty much transferred over into Google Docs. So um, just as a quick reference, you'll want to use, for example, heading one for all of your chapter titles. That's not only going to make sure your chapters are broken up, but it will also have your chapter title brought into the title area as opposed to in the body of the chapter. Uh, you can use three asterisks in a row to um, have your uh, scene breaks automatically imported. Um, you can use headings two through six for subheadings. So anything, we do have a tutorial that goes through all of the different options. Anything that you're seeing in Word should have an equivalent in Google Docs. And then once you're finished, you can um, use the download button in Google Docs to export as a docx file, and that will import well into Atticus. 
Um, I don't have a preview of the print. Still, does Atticus automatically insert page numbers? Absolutely. Uh, it will automatically include page numbers uh, for the print, print book, and it will renumber everything as needed as you move things around. Um, not having a preview of the print makes me a little bit nervous. So if you're having some sort of trouble, let us know where you can write into support and we can um, we can make sure that you have the preview. The other really handy thing about the previewer is once you're all finished your book, if you change over to print preview, um, underneath it tells you how many pages are in your book in parentheses. So my total book uh, page count is 63 pages. This is going to include the front matter. It's going to include any back uh, or any blank pages. That number, that total page count is what you will use to uh, calculate the size of your book cover for print. So it's a really handy number to know. Um, and it will differ from the page numbers. So you can see, I'll try to scroll in here, but um, in the print preview, you can see it does automatically number it. Um, and if I skip through the different pages, it updates the page numbers there. I don't know how well you can see that in the um, in the live stream, but it is on the print preview, absolutely. Um, okay, Gabriel's asking, can you test something for me? Select a chapter, create a break, rename scene one to one, scene two to two. Um, I don't really have to test that because I know exactly what you're talking about. The scene number or renaming the scenes, it does not currently save great. Um, generally, if you rename scene one, scene two, scene three, um, scene one and scene two will save and scene three won't. Uh, this is something that we know is not quite saving right, but because your scene titles do not export to your book in any fashion, they don't change anything about the final formatting. Um, it's really just for you in your organization. Um, it hasn't been a huge priority for us to, to fix that. It is on our to-do list, but there's just other things that are more um, crucial to make sure they um, are either added or updated. Uh, we do know that isn't working, but for the time being, if you leave it as just scene one, scene two, you can drag and drop and it will automatically renumber for you. Um, but the if you change the name of the scene titles, they, they um, don't always save perfectly. Sorry about that. It is on our list. We will fix that, I promise. Um, but hopefully it's not too inconvenient for the time being now that you know. Um, oh, there you go. Felicia has written in the comments how you can do the um, search and replace for the line break. So hopefully that is helpful for anyone who is having trouble importing from Word. Um, I always wondered why it was sectioned off makes sense and less confusing. So that's in regards to the back matter. Yes. Um, originally, it made sense to us because the front matter was its own section. And so we figured the back matter could get its own section. But as far as formatting and exporting goes, it didn't really make sense. So um, keeping it keeping it simple is uh, is ideal. Um, so Trixie asks, where do the name Atticus and the dog logo come from? So Atticus uh, has a few different literary um, connotations. So one of the first printed, um, published, fully formatted books ever to exist in the world uh, were Marcus Aurelius's letters to Atticus. Um, so that was part of it. Also, anybody who's um, a literary fan is probably familiar with Atticus Finch. So that came into it as well. Um, and partly we just really liked the name. Uh, and the dog logo, I, I think we just liked the dog. We liked the idea of having a little dog as the logo and he's super cute. Um, many of you are familiar with Dave Chesson, who is one of the founders. He's also the founder of kindlepreneur.com and uh, Publisher Rocket. And he actually um, recently, I think about a year ago now, got himself a new dog that he has named Atticus. It is not a Boston Terrier, but it is a beautiful dog named Atticus. So just kind of a kickback to the family. And we just love the, the doggo icon. It's, it's uh, kind of taking over my life personally, but I hope you like it too. We're all dog fans around here. Um, okay, Michael says, would love to be able to have two columns of text useful on the larger eight and a half by 11 for textbooks. Is there any way to change in the near future or other sizes like seven by 10? Um, okay, a couple things to address here. Atticus does not import columns or tables or charts. Um, for tables and charts, which I know is not what you asked for, but I'll just go over that because it's kind of related. You can save them as an image and insert as a image into your book. 
for columns, if it is just one section that you need uh, to be a column, you can do the same thing. You can create it in a graphics program um, or create a, just a screenshot of it and save that as an image that you can insert as a full page image in your book or just an image in the section. Um, but it does not currently uh, support columns. It is also on our to-do list. Um, so at some point in the future, there probably will be the ability to create columns of text, um, but it's not one of the most popular requests. Um, we do, it does come up and we do wanna include it. Um, it just takes a lot of programming to get it right uh, that we have to prioritize to kind of the order in which it's added. Um, if you are creating, for example, low content books, uh, what you may find helpful is to create an image that you can insert um, over and over and over again. For textbooks, that is a little bit different. Um, I don't have a great solution for a textbook right now, but hopefully in the future, it will be more compatible with what you're working on. And other trim sizes is also something that we are working on that is actively in development. Um, we will either be adding additional trim sizes that have been requested over time or make a custom trim size option so that you can set it yourself. Uh, that's going to be a little bit dependent on the programming side of things. So I don't have a 100% guaranteed answer for that right now, but it is in development. So that uh, will be something that is available in the future. Um, okay, so Song Fantasy has asked, what size should the book cover thumbnail image be for the upload on my dashboard? I use 1200 by 1875 and it's too big. So for the book cover, um, you don't really want to prioritize what it looks like on your Atticus dashboard um, because that's just, that's going to vary depending on what screen size you're using. You want to prioritize what it's going to look like for your ebook reader. Uh, so the book cover does export with the EPUB version of your book. And this is what readers are going to see in their library or bookshelf when they buy your book and download it to their device. So you want to make sure your book cover is set to the standards for um, ebook covers, which off the top of my head for um, for most, most ebooks, um, especially anything published through KDP, what they recommend is 1600 pixels by... 2560, I believe. I'm pretty sure that is correct. But you can Google um, and you can check on KDP requirements. Um, Apple has a slightly different cover size requirement if you are publishing through Apple iBooks. Um, but you'll just want to optimize your ebook cover for the ebook reader rather than Atticus itself. Um, continuing on that line of thought for your print book, you do not include your cover for the print book. Every single publisher is going to require you to upload a separate PDF version of your print cover, and that's going to include the front, spine, and back cover. So you'll always have to import that separately, so you don't have to bring that into Atticus at all. Um, it's just the ebook cover that you can add in the book details part. Hopefully that helps. I have a fruit fly in here. Uh, my EndNotes disappeared. Yikes, what to do? Um, I'm not sure. So this could be um, something as simple as um, in your formatting section. Um, I don't have any notes in this book, but in the formatting section, if you edit your theme and look to notes, it may be that um, you've just changed where they are appearing. So um, you can check and just make sure that they are still here. If they've completely disappeared from your book, something else may have happened, but we'll have to deal with that uh, with you on a kind of one-to-one -one basis because that's not a universal, um, there's not a universal solution. It just depends on what happened in your book. So write into support and we'll absolutely be able to help you uh, work that out. Um, okay, Gabriel asks, every time I log out, Atticus downloads a JSON file. How do I import it? It is a backup file, right? It is a backup file. So every time you log out, Atticus will back up your entire account um, and make sure you have um, the like a like a timestamp in your content uh, archive. So when you're writing, Atticus is always backing up line by line, making sure everything saves so that when you open it up again, it is there for you. It will save in your immediate account. Every time you either press the backup content button or you log out, it creates basically a timestamp of exactly where your account is at uh, in the cloud saving. So it's not just that it has saved your content, but it has like 
kind of collected it together and said, this is how everything is right at this exact moment. And it also exports that JSON file. That is an Atticus specific backup uh, encoded to work only within our platform. If you want it restored, you just have to write into our support and we will be able to do that for you. Um, you can't currently do it yourself. That is something that will probably probably be available in the future, but right now just write into support and we'll be able to take care of that for you. If you have the JSON file, it should be just a matter of minutes and we'll, we'll be able to restore that for you. Oh, uh, Felicia made a really great point in reference to uh, the EndNotes. If they were in your Word document, I didn't even think about that, but if they were set to EndNotes in your Word document and you tried to import into Atticus, uh, they won't import. So you're, if you're, when you're setting it up in Word um, or in Google Docs or any other program, you wanna have them set to footnotes and then you, they will import into Atticus and you can set them to EndNotes once you're in, in Atticus, um, but we do have a tutorial. So thank you very much for catching that, Felicia. That was a great note that I didn't even think of. That is fantastic. So we are just over the one hour point here. I'm happy to stay on if anybody has any more questions, if there's anything else you wanna discuss. Um, yesterday, we did have a question about inserting a two page map and uh, I didn't have an image ready on the go to display this. It wasn't working for me because I couldn't remember what trim size I had used. Um, so if anybody would like to go over that, I would be help, uh, happy to run through that now because I have I have an image ready. So let me know in the comments if that's something that you would find useful to uh, work out a two page spread and how that works. Um, but otherwise, if you guys are confident and ready to go and it's time to start writing, uh, I support that as well. So let me know in the comments. It's always an absolute pleasure to be here live streaming with you and interacting with our Atticus authors. You guys are so amazing. Uh, definitely one of the most supportive communities I have ever had the pleasure of working with. So thank you for being amazing. Thank you for writing all of these books and getting them out into the world. Uh, I hope you are all doing great uh, with your author careers. Um, okay, so another quick question here. Trixie says, non-breakable spaces are standard here in France and I guess in other countries. Can you have a button for that, like the smart quote one. That's a, a great idea to have a, a button for it. Currently, non-breakable spaces uh, break the, the ebook programming. Uh, that is something that we know is um, very common in other languages and other countries. So our programmers are aware of that and working on a solution. Um, that's creative, uh, a really creative idea to have it as a button. So I will share that with our team. I can't make any promises. I do not have anything to do with the programming itself. That is well beyond my capacity of understanding. Um, I just handle it once it's all been done, but I can absolutely share that um, recommendation or request. Um, okay, so Ingrid does wanna see the two page spread. So I'm happy to do that, absolutely. Um, anybody who needs to go, no hard feelings, you go ahead. Uh, but I will jump in and just quickly do a uh, little demo of this. So it is, I'll start with the two page map. Um, so this is designed for the kind of the print version of your page, print version of your book, so that you have your map as a whole and it shows up on the two page spread. Um, in the EPUB version, for most devices they read um, in profile, so it will just kind of, um, have two different images for it. You'll have one image and then the next image on the next page. Um, or you can set it up to have a different, um, to include the two page map only in the print version and then include an ebook version of the map where your map is um, horizontal or turned sideways and ha have it just as one page. Um, so you maps are normally in the front matter. So that's why I've jumped into the front matter here. You wanna start by adding a full page image um, since it is going to be a two page spread, you want two full page images um, and you can just put them where you want them to appear. First thing I always do is make sure I know what I'm gonna be working on. No, um, typing and talking at the same time is a problem with me. So left page map, and then I title my next one, right page map. And then you basically, you want to have your images pre-sized. So uh, 
we do have a handy calculator for this on Atticus. There's a tutorial on page sizing, uh, which you can find on our tutorials page. I created mine just in Canva. What I did is um, I've set this up uh, for, I think I'm in a six by nine book, or I should be, I should check that. Make sure your print layout um, or your trim size matches the size that you have your image. So I do, I'm at six by nine. So I have created an image to match six by nine plus bleed. So the calculator will help you work that out. Um, but you just want to have a, a little bit of extra space on your image so that the printers can trim off the edges and it won't cut off your um, picture itself. So use that calculator, make sure you have the image just right, and then you can upload it. Now I've already uploaded mine to save time here. And I'm, because I'm screaming, everything is a little bit slower for me here in the galleries because of all my images. There we go. I might import these backwards. No, I think I did it right. Uh, so import, oh, no, I have, because I'm on the right page. Let's just do it this way. Left page map and readjust, and this is my right page. So you get your images in there. There we go. And then you change to your print preview and um, you can set under the image, you can set it to margins, which is, as you can see it here, this is gonna match the margins of your book. So your, your uh, text fills up this exact amount of space, so your images will as well. Um, for a two page spread, you always wanna select full bleed and that will extend the image so that it fills the entire page right to the edges. Um, and you can do that for, oops. Oh, what have I done? I think I uploaded it to the wrong side. Okay, let's see if I can get this right. Okay. I, th I think I still did it backwards. That's my, that's my left page, this is my right page. Oh, well, it should show up just fine. You guys will be able to see what I mean. Nope, that's the same image. I'm good at this, guys. Uh, okay, this should work. You'll see what I mean. So again, you want to set it to full bleed. Um, because I'm streaming, everything is a bit slower here. So let's uh, just do a little refresh. Print preview, full bleed. And you should see in the previewer, why are you not updating? I swear I tested this just before um, the event. It's because I'm streaming, it does work. Um, everything has, it. it's a little bit slower to save when I am live streaming. It takes up too much of my computer's resources. Okay, so it doesn't want to do the full margins here, or the full bleed, sorry. All right, let's see. There we go. Uh, okay, so now you can see that it has filled out the entire page, and this should fill out the entire page as well. If I can get everything to save, when you're working on it, it should save the very first try. Assuming you're not live streaming the event at the same time and your computer's trying to sabotage you. Okay, try this one more time. There we go. I think I have now uploaded the same image twice, but you get, you get the point. Um, and then when you have your print book, which I can't, I can't, uh, you guys get the, get the idea. Um, I can't show you the, the spread obviously in front of me, but you'll have your two images side by side. They'll meet in the crease. You just want to make sure that the right side of your image here perfectly matches the left side of your image, which is very easy to do in programs like Book Brush or Canva. 
And then you'll want to come over here and just make sure the include in matches the side of your page, which is why I like to title it right page map, left page map. Uh, so you'll want to begin on right side for the right side of your map um, and begin on left side for the left side of your map. I'm determined to get this to save. Now I don't even remember which image it was. I think I've again uploaded them twice. Um, okay, so begin on left side. No, and I've deleted it. This is not uh, something that is an Atticus problem. This is a my internet streaming problem. So sorry for the terrible demo, but in general, that is how it will work to do the two page spread. Now, if you are wanting to do a two page spread for the background image um, of your book, um, versus, uh, like to have a, a full page image on the left side and, um, and then the background image on your chapter, you would set up the, the full page image on the left. You would set that up as a full page image. And then for your chapter background, you would actually set that up in the formatting. So you come over, edit your theme. And under the chapter heading details, you will want to change it to a background image. And then you can choose your image from the gallery or you can upload a new one. Again, you want to make sure that the trim size matches with bleed to make sure it covers your full page. I don't know which one's which. I should have made these images more different. Um, this image itself is not perfect for the background image because it's quite a busy image. So you want to make sure you're paying attention to the fact that there will be text over top of it. But for the EPUB version, what I wanted to make sure you saw is the EPUBs are not able to display an image behind the text. So your image is always just going to fill the header area and you'll just want to make sure that it looks normal there. Uh, so this image is, you know, fine. You would want to make sure that the text shows up on your image that you're using. But for the print version, it will fill your entire page. So again, you want to make sure you have it set to full bleed. Um, you can change your default text color. If you're using a dark image in the background, you can use light text with your background image. Um, or you can, uh, if you're using a, a light image, you can have um, the default text. You can also change the opacity of your image. Again, my previewer is refusing to play nice because I'm streaming. I did test this out before when I was not streaming and it worked perfectly. So this should work for you uh, without any trouble. Um, so that, it, and then you'll want to make sure you save your, your theme. So let's see if we can get it to preview what I'm when I'm not in the formatting mode. Uh, oh, I should have changed the default um, font color back when I changed the opacity. So what this would do is uh, you would have your background image on the right side of the page and then your full page image on the left side of the page. The very first chapter in your book, you wanna have the left side in the front matter. That is because the first uh, page of your chapter is always going to start on the right side of the book. So to get anything to start on the left side, you need it to be um, in the front matter. Beyond this first chapter, you can see, I need to change the font back now. Finally did load for us, but um, now you can't see any font on it. So let's try this one more time. Let's put this back to the default font and we'll save it. And it should load eventually. Um, but then any other place in your book, for, so for the second chapter, you would just put these full page images between each chapter. Um, and then your background image would match on the right side of the page. So as far as tutorials go, that was um, a real bummer because nothing was loaded loading properly for me. You can see it now. Uh, the background image should match up there. Um, and uh, I will have a proper tutorial where I've recorded everything um, so that it doesn't have this lag while this, I'm streaming. 
Um, but hopefully that was somewhat at least entertaining to watch as I struggled. Um, thank you. Thanks. A lot of thanks. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate all of you guys. Um, you are absolutely a, an amazing and wonderful community. Um, so thank you so much. Oh, Carolyn, welcome back. Haven't seen you in a little while. Thank you for being here. Uh, loving the new and improved update. It's working so much better when I'm on the iPad. That is wonderful news. We did make some um, adjustments so that it works better on smaller screen sizes. So that's really great to hear that it's working better for you. Thank you so much for your feedback. Um, Ingrid has asked, do you know if KDP charges you, us, US or us more for images, especially on print books? Um, not if it's black and white. For print books, if it's black and white, you pay the black and white cost. If you have um, if you have any of your images that you want to include in color, you have to select full color for the entire book. And yes, that will probably skyrocket your cost. For the EPUB version, color full, uh, black and white doesn't matter. That's dependent on the um, device and whether it is able to show color. Uh, so that won't make a difference. If you have full color images in the book that you export from Atticus, when you're in KDP, you can still set it to black and white or grayscale and it will just print that way. So you don't have to worry about changing the colors. Just make sure that you proof it to make sure you can see all your text and the images work well. Um, but yeah, even a single page of color in the print book is going to skyrocket your cost. Absolutely. Uh, as far as file size goes, it goes um, color does not change the file size of your book. Images will. That doesn't affect the print book. You can have any size. That doesn't matter. For the ebook, um, if you are using the 70% royalty rate on KDP, it will charge you depending on delivery fees. So the bigger your file is, the more the delivery fees will cost. Atticus does compress things. Um, and then KD we do it in a way that allows KDP to further compress. So we'll get the file size as, as small as possible. But we do recommend you pre-size your images to reduce the file size as much as you can without affecting the quality of your images. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so glad I, I've been able to come on and help you guys. Uh, you love the full bleed. That's great to know. Um, thank you. Thank you for, for being here. Um, just quick follow up here. What about color versus black and white? I think I just covered that. Um, so hopefully that, that understood or <laughs> that was understandable. I'm reading your, your future comments and um, I can't type and talk at the same time. And I apparently can't read and talk at the same time either. Uh, yes, so Carolyn has um, answered as well. They, uh, exactly what I said about the, the file size for the eBooks, absolutely. Um, thank you for jumping in with that. We really appreciate your um, comments in the community. You're always so wonderful. Um, Okay, I'm glad that all helped. Sorry for my struggles with the images. Um, Carolyn says, a lot of authors are selling direct, selling their eBooks from their websites. This allows them to do whatever they want. Absolutely, many are switching to print on demand platforms that connect to their websites. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if any of you were at uh, 20, 20 Books Conference last year, but one of the biggest topics of conversation was going wide. Um, if you are an author who is still kind of working exclusively with KDP, that may be a topic of interest for you. You can pretty much Google it and everybody's talking about going wide. So um, definitely opportunity there, but there is nothing wrong with sticking with KDP if that is just the easy choice. And if it gets your books published, um, whatever works for you. But I agree with Carolyn, it gives you more freedom. Um, absolutely. And it tends to keep a few extra pennies in your own pocket. Um, yes. Okay. So more talk about images and file sizes. Um, so Miss Calabrese is, ha has a different take on it. She has 16 color images and her new, um, book color KDP charges $3. So, um, this really is perspective based and what you're charging for your book and what your genre is, what your market is uh, expecting. It really depends. It's very unique. For a lot of people, $3 of costs is going to have a significant impact on what they're taking home um, per book. And that $3 adds up really quickly. Um, 
So it, that is a significant charge for a lot of people. If you're a children's book author, I mean, you can't really not have color images. So $3 is built into the cost of production. Um, it really depends on your perspective and what you're, you're hoping to accomplish with your book. But there's always two sides. So thank you definitely for bringing that up. Um, absolutely makes a difference. There's also now, um, I think it was last summer that KDP introduces introduced the difference between um, premium and standard color. So standard color is a lot less expensive than the premium. Um, if you're doing like a high quality photo book or children's book, you probably want to go for the premium. But if you just are inserting a few color pages throughout your book um, that you really want the impact of color, but you don't want to pay the absolute premium, that is an option for you as well. Um, absolutely great, great questions, great comments, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, I, uh, I really appreciate you all being here. Um, I think we've answered most of the questions. Um, so, um, yeah, this is interesting too. I'm just, I'm, I've, I've kind of skipped a few because you guys are chatting with each other, which I love. Thank you. Um, but looking into Ream Stories as a subscription, kind of like Kindlevella, um, that's another option to go, to go with your books as well. Um, there are all sorts of options for, um, publishing and literally any way you can get more content into the world. We support you. Um, and I really hope you guys are all doing amazingly well with your author careers. Thank you again for being here. I am going to sign off now and let you guys get back to your writing or your life, uh, in any capacity that you are ready to take on the day or evening. Uh, but thank you so much for being here. As always, you've been absolutely wonderful and we really, really appreciate you. Uh, and um, I will be back tomorrow. That will be the last day of our five-day live streaming session. So if anybody is around, um, I will be going 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time tomorrow. I will be back. So maybe I will see you there. Maybe you don't need to be there, but I appreciate you either way. Have a great day, everyone.